So we're in the back corner uh, where we have some kind of sort of experimental stuff. This is uh, Mangifera odorata. Thank you. Um, so arguably it's not even a true mango. It's a different species. Uh, we did a tasting video on this last year that was pretty strange. It's a weird fruit, um, but uh, we kind of have it back here in a corner where we're not too concerned about it. We've also got a couple of other ingas. These are also veras, are they not? Um, I think so. Or that inga fuhelii or whatever. I don't know how to pronounce and it. And then back over here, we've got another inga that just got trimmed back. Oh, and that's inga... Spectabilis or spectabilis. spectabilis. And we're not really stopped to talk about a lot of the bananas through here because there's so many of them. But you can see we kind of border everything with bananas. We have about 60 varieties and... Maybe some point, if you want to go through and just do a banana video, we can yeah. cover those. Uh, we just noticed that our monkey finger banana is blooming for the first time. Actually, fruiting, it's already bloomed. Yeah. But um, You know, I sell monkey finger because it's they, they're all spread out, really kind of weird, long looking. Uh, this is the first... First time we've had it. First time ours has fruited, so... Uh, it's actually, I don't know, is it meant to be this dwarf or is this one just kind of stunted? It's just dwarf. Everything back here has had no water on it, yeah. no well, it fertilizer, really. Just mulch. It's got irrigation. But I hardly turn it on. No. So. Well. Anyway, <laughs> monkey finger. So I mentioned most of our white sapotes we have up front. Uh, this is the one we have in the back. This is was purchased as a Subel. We're a little <laughs> doubtful as it's actually a Subel or not, but... Uh, Anyway, it uh, doesn't do great back here. It goes on and off, and it'll have a growth spurt, and then it'll look kind of bad, and then it'll growth spurt and look bad. But um, it is blooming now, so we'll see if this sets any fruit. It's got a lot more new growth coming out, some bloom. So uh, it hasn't fruited yet, but if it does, we'll, uh, we'll definitely do a video on that. This is our ice cream mango. Um, it's doing really good this year production-wise. We've got a lot of fruit on it. Uh, ice cream is one of those mangoes that you probably either love it or you don't and it's uh, I guess that's true of everything in the world <laughs> you either love it or you don't but um, it's got a good spicy flavor to it. Uh, it it a lot of the trees that I've seen have had a lot of anthracnose problems uh, we've got one you see it's planted out here with lots of space around it lots of airflow and so this one's uh, has done pretty well but um, the fruit on it too, it uh, when it's ripe, it's still a little bit green. You'll start to see a little bit of a yellow tinge on them, but they don't really color up very much. So it's a little harder to tell when they're ripe. But um, but people who love mangoes, a lot of them really, really love this particular cultivar. So this is the back corner of our yard, <laughs> and it's uh, it's a little messy. It uh, this place does not get. This is a lot of our experimental stuff ends up back here. There's no irrigation and we don't pay a lot of attention to it. So I'm just going to quick run by through what we've got here. We've got over here on the fence line, we've got some uh, mangoes. That's uh, an ugly Betty right there. Over here we have a Chocanon. And then a little bit farther down we have a Beverly that actually has some fruit on it this year. Uh, this is a jackfruit. This is actually a seedling of Golden Pillow. Uh, it has not... It fruited some last year, but the fruit didn't finish. So we should get some fruit on it this year and see if it's any good or not. Right behind this jackfruit, there is a mango that is a seedling of Tyler Premier. Uh, some people are calling it Tyler Supreme. It's been very, very productive for us yet so far, but we haven't really had a good fruit yet. Um, I, I think they've been coming off a little bit early. If this is a, a seedling that was selected for down at the repository in Miami as being really good, so I'm sure there's something to it. But um, I, it blew over in a windstorm we had earlier, and so I've tried to prop it back up, and so it's on the ground halfway, not doing great. But um, anyway, we should be able to get some good fruit off of it this year just simply because there's so much. Um, over here, we've got some bananas that have fallen down. Um, and coming back from the roots. That's dwarf namwa. There's dwarf actually namwa. mango sitting in the bunch that's almost on the ground. Yeah, so we, anyway, again, this is our, not our best corner. 
Uh, we have uh, sweet tart mango, which is loaded with fruit this year. It did not produce much last year, and it's doing really good this year. So uh, that's, uh, and I really like that variety, so I'm excited about that. And back behind that one, we have, which mango fruit is punch. that? Fruit punch. Fruit punch mango, yes, with the kind of reddish blush on them there. Uh, which is another one I like. Actually, we have had some this year, not off our tree, but from some other people's that were very good. So um, looking forward to those. And then the big banana back in the back, that's a rhino horn, which is actually a plantain. Um, and for not getting much water, it has done very, very well back there because it, it's been highly neglected. And I think that's everything significant back in this corner yeah. that gets no love. <laughs> This is a peach cobbler mango. Um, this is a, I like this, I like this one. Um, the fruit's good, absolutely. Uh, this is another one of those kind of vigorous trees that I like. We actually had some big eucalyptus trees that were being cut down and the tree cutter dropped one and it split this tree right in half. And so we just figured it was dead. Um, it completely healed up. You can't even see where the damage was. So I love that, I love that when you get a good vigorous, tough grower uh, it also kind of, again, if you have a small space, don't try to, this is a vigorous growing mango. You're not going to want to stick this in a small area because it will fill it up. I do have to prune this one fairly heavily every year, but, um, I like that in a mango. So that's, that's my personal preference, but you can see it also, uh, is producing a lot of fruit this year. Anyway, but you can see how, uh, how full this one is and, uh, these should be starting to get ready uh, fairly soon. So a few more mangoes. Uh, back in the back there, we have cotton candy. Uh, cotton candy has not produced for us th this year. It's got fruit on it this year. We haven't tried it yet this year. Um, very, very sweet mango. It's supposed to have like one of the highest bricks values of any mango. Uh, this is a sugar loaf, which is also, is that E4? Yeah. Um, which is, an just a wonderful mango we have had some we actually bought some from somebody this year last year it was one of our absolute favorites it tastes to me like just a super super sweet pineapple although some people say it tastes like other things but anyway it's no matter what you think it tastes like it's it's still very good uh, the jackfruit in the back is called red morning it is not produced for me um, of all of the jackfruits that I have put in the ground that are supposed to be red None of them so far have ever been red. This one hasn't produced as my last chance at actually getting a red mango, a red uh, jackfruit. So we'll see how that turns out. And right over here, uh, this little short mango here is Southern Blush. Um, Southern Blush has one of the most beautiful mangoes uh, you'll ever see once they're ripe. They have yellows and oranges and reds and it's just an absolute gorgeous piece of fruit. It tastes okay too. Um, the problem with Southern Blush is it has a lot of fungal issues. Um, this one's kind of stunted. Actually, I think it's, it's also kind of a semi-dwarf, but um, it, it, it does definitely very susceptible to fungal issues. And um, this one's had some even systemic problems that I have to end up spraying it with copper and sulfur a lot more often. But um, uh, we'll I, wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it uh, unless, again, this is... This kind of, for me, falls into the experimental zone, but uh, I, you know, don't plant one unless you've tried the fruit and you really, really like it. And then back here is, we just planted another mango that is, oh, oh Alan Parbanishan. Uh, we just put that in a few weeks ago, so we'll have to wait and see how that turns out. Good mango. So uh, a couple other, we're in the mango jackfruit section here. Um, this mango here on your right is pina colada. Um, pina colada is an absolutely fantastic mango. Um, I had some issues with this one getting it started, had to inarch some extra trunks. Um, and I have had other people who've had that same problem. I don't know if it is to do with the cultivar or if, uh, again, maybe they, the year that we were all planting those, they had some bad root stocks, but it's doing great now. Um, it does tend to get something on the fruit that makes them look like potatoes. I mentioned that on uh, one of the other ones earlier where they get kind of brown and scaly looking. Uh, I'm not real sure what that is, but it doesn't have it much this year. 
So we're hoping that uh, a lot of this, and this is the heaviest it's fruited so far. Uh, over on this side is Glen, and Glen is now Valerie's favorite mango. Um, it's one of my favorites too, just as far as production goes. This thing wants to produce fruit. The, even the very first year we put a little three gallon in there, it was producing fruit, and it has produced every year since. It's, it produces heavy. The fruit itself is really nice. It's um, it doesn't have any of the really extra complex flavors. There's no coconut, there's no spiciness or anything, but it's a really smooth, sweet, juicy mango uh, with a great flavor, and it just produces loads of fruit. So uh, this is, I, I really like this tree. And then back behind me, we've got, uh, this is a Cristela jackfruit. And you can see it's got down there, it's got some fruit on the ground that's probably about ready. I need to check these and see what's right. And then on the other side, back in here, is a jackfruit that was sold to me as an Excalibur Red, but the fruit's not red, the fruit's not even actually any good, so I don't know what they grafted onto this, but it's, it's terrible. So this is one we use if we need green jackfruits for making barbecue, uh, this is where we'll get them because it's not worth letting them ripen. And if it dies, nobody's going to be dies, sad. <laughs> that's right. so it's got a couple of brown leaves on there and I don't even care. So over here uh, we have a Maha Chinook uh, mango. Um, this one, I like this one. Uh, we've not really had good fruit off of it. We think we're not quite picking it at the right time. I think I'm picking them early. We're going to leave them on and see if they uh, do better. Um, it's just a really pretty mango. It's a nice long, called, they call that sigmoid shaped when it's kind of long like an S. Um, but it's a very pretty tree. It's a very pretty mango. And uh, I have been told that it actually tastes really good too, but I just haven't had ones that, uh, that were ready yet. And a couple more jackfruits back here. This is the Mai 2. Uh, there are three Mai varieties, Mai 1, Mai 2, Mai 3. And the best varieties, they say, are the 1 and the 3. I have the 2. I don't know why I ended up with a 2, I think because I was really wanting a 1 or a 3, but what they had was 2, so I went ahead and bought it. It's actually turned out to be a pretty good one. Obviously, they named it, so it's, it's, uh, it's I don't know if you can see or not, this got a fruit in here. It's, it, uh, I think the reason that my two was less desirable than one in three was that it, it has a reputation for not producing well. Um, but this one, and this one did not produce at all until last year. And then it produced a load last year. I don't know how many, I probably had like 20 on this tree last year. And it's got a lot starting this year too, it looks like. But uh, the fruit is actually very good. It's just, I, th I think it was kind of less desirable because of its, it takes a long time before it starts producing. Uh, this is my current favorite uh, jackfruit. This is Bangkok lemon. Um, this is the very first uh, jackfruit that I put in and it has been my heaviest producer and it's also the best tasting of the ones that I've got right now. Um, and you can see it's absolutely loaded with fruit. Last year it was loaded with more fruit than we could eat. Um, it's got fruit down at the bottom, it's got fruit up at the top, and it, the, the quality of the fruit uh, is just really good. It's very sweet, it's, it's got a little tang of lemon to it maybe, but uh, it's easy to clean. It, uh, it's just all around, it's my, by far my best jackfruit, and uh, I'm very happy with it. And back here we got a few more jackfruits. Um, this is... Butter crunch. Butter crunch, thank you. Um, this is butter crunch. This is a uh, variety that's grown at, um, the original seedling is down at Fruitscapes on Pine Island. This was the first, that of, on the tree down at Pine Island, was the first jackfruit I ever had that I liked. And so that's, I've kept this one going and it's, uh, it's got some fruit coming on down low, a little bit of high too. Um, this is an orange crush which is a newer variety that uh, I just got started um, a couple years ago, hasn't fruited yet. And then back down on the other end, I have what's supposed to be Borneo Red. Uh, it did have fruit last year that was not red. Borneo Red is supposed to be a good variety, so I don't know if... He wasn't this... even that good. Yeah, I, so I don't know. I don't know. This maybe came from the same place as my Excalibur Red, and so maybe being that there was a demand for red jackfruits they started throwing out who knows who knows anyway it's not good so this is our grape arbor uh we have 
four vines on here. They're all the same variety. They're all Southern Blush. Southern Home. Southern Home. Thank you. Southern Blush is a mango. Uh, I wish if I had redone it, I would have put four different varieties on there just for the variety. Uh, it does have fruit that are set right here. You can see. Um, Southern Home is a really, really good grape variety. It's actually, it's an inter-Pacific hybrid between uh, bunch grapes and muscadines. And I think it's three quarters muscadine, one quarter bunch grape. Um, bunch grapes don't grow in Florida because we have something called Pierce disease, which will wipe out bunch grapes. But apparently this has got just enough to, to make it work. Um, I used to have uh, other vines down low. I took those off last year because um, I had too much sitting on the ground and there's plenty going up high so I reshaped these a little bit. Um, these have been in the ground for I'm guessing six years. Six yeah. years. I was gonna say six, six, seven years. A long time. Um, and they're doing pretty well. They're on irrig drip irrigation. Um, it, it, it's a little bit of work to prune them after every year because they do get really full but the grapes are excellent. And we, a couple times years we thought we didn't get any great production at all and then we realized that our daughter had come out and was eating them all and not telling us about it so uh, first come first serve it's all fair game but uh anyway yeah, you gotta than, get out yeah. you gotta get out early yeah i'd rather her eat them than the squirrels uh, this is a himalayan mulberry and it hasn't produced a lot of fruit for us mostly what this has produced is mulberry and so i have to trim this thing back heavily <laughs> it twice a year mostly mulberry. it's producing mulberry leaves and mulberry branches which is great because our tortoises like to eat them um i'm trying to remember the last time i actually got fruit off of this thing i ate a bunch of Didn't, oh okay well it's just like the grapes then first come first <laughs> serve um but mulberries do great in florida we've really enjoyed them um this isn't my favorite variety probably, but we do have some really good varieties that we've enjoyed and uh, It's yeah. super long Yeah, it's, yeah. it's got the real the fruits are very very long on there and apparently they're good So I hear but uh, anyway, that's a shame. <laughs> it's a shame. I know it's that's uh, well, that, that's the rule if you get there first you get to eat it. So, um, so You got to wake up early over here. We have a tamarind this is a sweet tamarind. Uh, all tamarinds are pretty sour, but this is a little less sour. It's really not sweet, it's, but it's sweeter. Um, this has been in the ground for a long time with us too. Even when it was little, it bloomed, but it doesn't set much fruit. I think it set a little bit last year. There might be a few on it this year. If we watered it, I think if, it would do better. Yeah, it doesn't get a lot of care back here. It's not on irrigation, so it doesn't get, unless it gets hand watered, it doesn't get much. But um, but it's a nice tree. I uh, just pruned it not too long ago, which is why it's shaped like this. It was getting kind of lanky. But uh, we do like the fruit. And if you're ever making pad thai, it's good for that. This is our original banana circle. Uh, we did bananas in clusters and we did them in lines for a long time. And this was the first time we tried a circle. And the circles really work. We'll probably never do anything but circles again. Um, the idea being that you have a central area where you can dump, dump your mulch and your compost. The bananas are planted around it so they can all feed off of it. Um, we usually do about five or six varieties per circle. And this has got some of our favorites. This has got uh, praying hands and patogo. And it's got a green ii, whichever, uh, myoli. Is that, yeah. Anyway. Uh, and they're doing really well. Some of them are starting to kind of grow. They're kind of taking over into the center. We need to thin them a little bit. But... Um, they've done really, really well here. Celeste also has a couple of, uh, apples. Brooke um, has a couple of Brooke apples. has a couple of apples. She's mostly growing them because her rabbits like to chew on apple wood. But these are varieties that will fruit in, uh, Florida. I think there are three altogether. This is Anna and Dorset. I think there's a third one, but I we can't... We had it up near Gainesville. Yeah, but I it, can't remember yeah. which one it is. Anyway, there's a few apples that have low chill requirements that will still produce fruit in Florida, which is the, the limiting factor. Um, and I have had fruit off of these, the ones that we had when we lived up in Archer, and they're good. They're very small, but they're, it tastes like an apple. I mean, you could grow a jujube and get the same result a lot better. In South Florida. In yeah. South Florida, but, um, but these are okay. 
And then this is, uh, Celeste has been planting a lot of this. This is more grown as a ground cover mulch. Chop and drop. Yeah. Chop and drop. Anyway, it's, uh, it's doing fabulous here. And the problem, we have a lot of issues with ever getting caught up in the weeds back here. And it's, um, anytime you can grow something, or again, we're, gonna, we're starting to put out more perennial peanut and things like that that'll give us better ground cover to fight the weeds. But this stuff works too, even if it's not really a ground cover. I mean, it's, it, it will reduce your weed load. And you can cut it down and mulch it as well. So this is our little Anona area. Um, we have all our Anonas back here and we just threw them back here. And for years, they just kind of sat here and looked bad. And then last year I put in an irrigation line and it made all the difference. Anonas want to have some irrigation. And now that we do, everything is green, everything is full. So if your Anonas aren't doing good, put them on some drip irrigation. But we've got, this, is, this one was a gift from uh, Ray Jones. This is an Anona, and I don't know which one it is. I'll put it on the bottom. I think Josh figured it yeah, out. Yeah, it's uh, actually we got it as one thing and it turned out it's a different thing, but it's some kind of an unusual one. But we've got some some Atamoyas, we've got some sugar apples, we've got some Rolenias, custard we've got, apple, uh, custard apple, Ilgamas back there. Um, so anyway, just kind of an experimental zone, which again wasn't working in at all till we put the irrigation in. And so now we've even got some fruit on uh, the Geffner's got some fruit, I think. That's the sugar apple back there. Oh, this is the Geffner. Yeah. Um, so anyway, but we do have some fruit finally coming in. So, um, so that's nice. Yep. These are a couple of jackfruits that I have back in what has become our dog pen. Um, actually, the one in the middle is a Cochin and it's actually a grafted variety. The other two on each side are seedlings that came from fruit that came from John Painter's place down on Pine Island. John Painter has the best jackfruit um, and we had one in particular from him that was good. The rag was even good and edible. So I took some seeds from that one and I planted them out and I do have fruit coming. So this year, I think the first, might have had one last year, but for the first time this year, I should get enough fruit to tell if any of these are going to be good, if they're going to be enough like the, the mother plant, and we can give them a name and, and keep them. All right, so this is our beautiful new project we're working on. Um, it's actually, it looks terrible. This used to be a part of the chicken pen. Chickens were had all the way out here, but they weren't using any of this area, and it was just getting waist deep in weeds um, so we decided to reclaim it so we've gone through and bulldozed everything cleared it out gotten rid of most of the weeds um, and we got some new stuff planted in here the idea this is going to be kind of our vegetable garden area we've got some uh, raised beds that we're putting in over here so we're going to have some raised beds going with uh, with vegetables we do have uh, actually there used to be a big tree stump here that we've covered up in this mound of, of mulch and we've got a banana circle started around it. We've got some mulberries coming in, and in the back we've got a bentingia and... Jujube back there. A jujube starting way back there. So a few other things that we like and we want a little extra space for. But mostly this is, we're gonna to try to make this more of a raised bed vegetable growing area. And I've already got some perennial peanuts started as ground cover. And we'll probably also grow some things like pumpkins and watermelons that need a little more space. Uh, so this area, this is kind of where Celeste grows some of her favorite things uh, that we don't really have room for other places. This is a Barbados cherry uh, variety, is Florida sweet. And actually, I was going to eat some fruit off of it because we just, within two or three days ago, it still had ripe fruit on it. The ripe fruit is now gone, but it's bloomed again, and this you can hear it buzzing with bees. And it's not the honeybees that really like this, but it's a lot of the unusual native bees that get in. And maybe we'll see, get, we get some video of some of these buzzing around here. But it has beautiful little pink flowers. The fruit comes out. It looks kind of like a cherry. Um, it's very tart, but not like too tart to eat. But it's super high in vitamin C. Um, so it's a really neat little plant to have, and it grows very easily. A lot of people even make hedges out of them. Uh, this is a cinnamon apple, which I believe is a puteria. Yep. And um, we had this fruit down when, at uh, Fruit and Spice Park down in Homestead and just really loved it. And we've moved it down. We've uh, planted some and we've actually got fruit this year. 
it tastes like it's it sounds weird but it tastes like buttered white bread um which is a strange thing for fruit to taste like but it really does and it doesn't even sound that good but it really is um if it doesn't sound good you didn't grow up in the 70s yeah so. you got to grow up in the 70s and 80s eating wonder bread with butter on it um but this has done really well here in this area and it's um it's Okay, is this grafted or is this seedling? It's a seedling. Okay, this yeah. is a seedling. So. And so four to five years from seed, we yeah. have fruit. So. Um, we do have also a, a couple, actually three now, I think, of these are finger limes. And finger lime is an Australian citrus. It does not appear to be affected by citrus greening, so they're actually surviving. But they have little uh, fruits about the size of my thumb. And they also call them uh, citrus caviar and the little, you know, normally with, you get the little uh, pockets inside citrus and these you squeeze them out and um, it's considered very gourmet, I guess. Uh, we have a peanut butter fruit here in the back. It's kind of hard to see. It's <laughs> peanut butter fruit. Um, and it looks like it's got fruit that are, that are setting here. Uh, it really does taste like peanut butter. Um, they get little red fruits on them that are very, very soft. And the problem we have with them is getting to them before the wasps do. The fruits are so soft that the wasps can chew them up and there's something in there that they're attracted to. So you will have to kind of get there soon before uh, other insects eat them up. Uh, we also have blackberry jam fruit. This is just another kind of a uh, novelty novelty fruit yeah it's it looks kind of like blackberry jam I don't really think it tastes that much like it but it's okay it's, it's a little sweet um, a little capsule thing cut them open it's got black goo inside that tastes good to me it tastes like blackberry jam with raisins and balsamic okay not and then, crazy about them but they're and we have a little tiny olosapo and that one's grafted oh a grafted olosapo I guess I grafted it. You did? I don't remember. Yep. Um, this is another one that's kind of an unusual one that we also discovered down at uh, Fruit and Spice Park. And I don't remember much about the fruit, how it tasted. Oh, hello, butterfly. I don't know that I've ever tasted a good one. Okay. But everybody who's tasted it really liked it. So, so. Anyway. And someone gave us um, the rootstock for it. So. And I guess we got... We got permission. We got permission and got our budwood from Fruit and Spice Park. Gin berry, I don't know anything about. Um, I've never had gin, but it, maybe it tastes like gin. It's a little pink berry. Um, not much flesh, but I think it's a citrus relative, actually, maybe. Uh, I don't know anything about it, so okay. I can't say. Uh, this is our lemon. <laughs> we have this ugly little scraggly lemon <laughs> bush weed down here. It's a ponderosa lemon. It is. And, and it never still gets... produces gigantic lemons down here every year. And anytime like we need, oh, let's make lemonade. Oh, we don't have any lemons. We can often come out here and there's one under this ugly, ugly, ugly It never bush. gets over three feet tall. It ever. won't grow, it, but it's also not getting citrus greening. Um, so we'll take it. Yeah, we'll take it. It's a it's a win win. Mm -hmm. This is not a fruit tree. This is sweet almond. Or almond verbena? Almond verbena. Um, it's just an ornamental. It smells amazing. And I don't know if you can hear or not. I'll be quiet for a second. I don't know if you can hear from there or not. It is absolutely buzzing with bees and wasps and flies and everything. They are all over this thing. And it just smells fantastic. And I'm not usually a big proponent for... Uh, non-fruiting plants i don't i don't really do the ornamentals much but i really like this bush um it just smells it smells so nice and the bees are just having the time of their lives so this is celeste we have some raised beds like i mentioned we're getting ready to move all our raised beds over to the new area but this is some of the older raised beds that we've got here and this is celeste's cornfield <laughs> And as you can see, it's growing just as high as a very small elephant's eye. And um, so, look at that. There's a lot of pollen, though. Yeah, there is. Good. So anyway, they'll probably, I don't know, what kind of corn is this? I think it's a tropical, or oh, Hawaiian corn. Hawaiian <clears throat> corn. I don't so, know which kind, I forgot. But. Anyway, once we get some fruit, maybe we'll do a video on our Hawaiian corn and see how it turned <laughs> if out. If we get fruit. We don't spray with anything. I don't even use BT <coughs> on anything in the yard. So we have caterpillars. 
They get everything. <laughs> good pollen though. Get that pollen down yeah. there on that silk. Uh, anything else? There's a tomatillo. Those come back every year. This? <clears throat> yeah, from seed when it's time for them to come up. And the cilantro does the same thing in the winter. Like I never plant those and then they just boom. When it's their time to shine, they... I wish we liked tomatillos. I know. Well, I do like salsa verde, but this isn't a particularly good variety. So maybe I'll plant a good variety one day. So that concludes our yard tour. We didn't hit absolutely everything in the yard, but that would uh, be really difficult to do. Mostly we got stuff that was still uh, uh, fruiting right now or getting ready to. But I hope you enjoyed our look around. And uh, we're going to probably be updating soon with the, some videos of mini tours. We didn't really look at our tortoise pen and we didn't really look at our chicken pen area. So we'll add those in later. But uh, this was the bulk of it. So hope you enjoyed and we'll see you next time. <laughs>